amongst the martyrs of Ashura, there was a black slave from Africa, whose name was Joan ibn Huay. On the day of Ashura, and in the middle of the battle, Joan asked permission for fighting from Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein said, You are a slave, Joan. Slaves are exempt from fighting. Joan fell to Imam's feet and said, Oh, Master, it's not fair that I remain with you in times of comfort, but leave you in hard times. Though my smell is not good, and I am black in color, but I swear to God that I shall not part from you until my dark blood gets mixed with your red blood. Thus, he obtained the permission and went into battle. After a valorous battle, he was martyred. Thus he joined the ranks of the thirsty martyrs of the desert of Nainoa. At that moment, Imam Hussein came by him and said, O oh God, enlighten his face and make his scent fragrant and associate him with Muhammad and his progeny. We are your sons. We won't allow your sacrifice to die out. If somebody goes to Nigeria during the days of Ashura, they may think that they are in Karbala. In every city in Nigeria, there are some Shia who support or are students of Sheikh Zakzaki. In every city or in every area, they have a Hosseiniya. Before Muharram, two to three days, sometimes five days before Muharram, they start preparing. When you reach our Hosseiniya, you can tell from far that something is going on. This means that Muharram has arrived. You can tell from afar the flag of Ya Hussein, the flag of Ya Abul Fadl Abbas. You see the signs that Muharram has arrived. You don't have to look at the Husseiniya and its vicinity to know that Muharram has arrived. 
You can understand that it's Muharram just by looking at the Nigerian Shia themselves. Everything changes. Their clothes, their behavior, the way they talk, everything. When you see a Shia person in Nigeria, in Kaduna, there is no need to ask. You just understand that Ashura has arrived. They wear black clothes and they put up signs. They raise up flags and they put signs up such as Ya Hussein, Ya Shaheed, O Hussein, O Martyr. Basically, in those few days before Muharram, some of our shops and schools are shut. Everything is shut. And this means Ashura has arrived. If we didn't announce that it's Muharram, the Wahhabis would have done that for us. They would say to people, look at these Shias, their Muharram has arrived. Their innovation has now begun. They say things like this. They say their innovation, their bid'ah has begun. Their lies have begun. This is what they say. So even if we don't announce the arrival of Ashura, they will do it for us. From the first day, from the first night, the gatherings begin. In Nigeria, when people record these programs or speeches, it's because they've recently become a Shia. And they want to know about Hussein and the infallible Imams. For this reason, they record these speeches. Maybe in Iran, the youth wait eagerly for the end of the speech and say that we have come only to beat our chests. But no, we're not like this. We're eager to listen to the speeches about Hussein. They want to hear about the virtues of the Ahlul Bayt. They want to hear about the oppression done upon the Ahlul Bayt. They have just started. The speeches that the scholars give over there have such an impact on the people who have become Shia and on the people who have not yet embraced Shiism. The Shia benefit from these speeches, from the great scholars. This is because even now, the Shia books have not been disseminated in Nigeria. It is possible to find a Shia in Nigeria who does not possess a Mafata Jinnan, but is so dedicated and has so much belief in Hussein and the religion of the Ahlul Bayt that they will give their lives for Hussein. Yes, the people of Nigeria listen to the speeches of scholars more. 
In Nigeria, whenever Sheikh Zaksaki speaks about Ashura, the people come. Not only Shia come, even non-Shia, because Nigeria is a big country, it's not possible for everyone to come to Zaria. Because of this, you'll see people recording the speeches on their phones and other devices. Sometimes, someone will call a person who is at the speech and ask him to leave his phone on so that he can hear what Sheikh Zaksaki has to say. Everything about Ashura is new in Nigeria. The people are eager to know what happened on Ashura. Some record it and take it back to the city from which they have come from, because they've come from places far and wide. Some have come to Zaria from 400 or even a thousand kilometers away. Some even come from outside Nigeria. They stay in Zaria for 10 or 20 days, only for Muharram, because they believe, they believe that maybe Zaria can become like Karbala. There is no place in Nigeria like Zaria, because its circumstances are so much like that of Karbala. We see that people record the speeches of Sheikh Zakzaki and distribute them within the country and outside its borders. They distribute them to a far-flung areas, to the villages, and they'll ask, you've come from Zaria, what happened on Ashura? What did the Sheikh say on Ashura, in Muharram? Do you have anything new you can give us? They spread the message through Bluetooth or by making CDs and it's distributed to the masses, even in towns where there isn't a single scholar. They make and distribute these CDs containing the speeches of Sheikh Zakzaki. The people gather and the speeches of the Sheikh are played. The speeches about Ashura, Muharram and Imam Hussein. This is just what I've been saying to you. The people are very keen about the martyrs of Karbala and about Muharram because they know that there are things that they don't know. Slowly by slowly, these people come to commemorate the morning. And the scholar who comes speaks with a Nigerian accent. The emotions in the people rise. The commemoration begins.
on the 10th of Muharram. All of the areas in Nigeria with a Shia population are aware that tomorrow is the 10th of Muharram. Because the Shia all change on the night of Ashura. Everyone leaves their houses and goes to the Husseiniya. They gather in the Husseiniya and some sleep while others recite supplications and pray until the morning of the 10th of Muharram. In the Ashura procession, we explain the events of Karbala to the people. We present it to the people. For example, we raise the head of Imam Hussein and say, O oh people, look, do you know whose head this was? This was the head of Imam Hussein. This was the head of the grandson of the Holy Prophet. This was the head of the son of Amir al Mu'minin. This is the head of the son of the daughter of the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was his grandfather. His father was Ali. His mother was Fatima al Zahra. How was Imam Hussein killed? How was Imam Hussein's head separated from his body? The people begin asking questions. They ask, how was Imam Hussein killed? Was Imam Hussein killed in this way? Did they separate his head from his body? The people themselves ask this. They say, we haven't heard this before. Suddenly, you'll see non-Shia and Christians crying. Maybe this is the first time they're seeing this. Maybe this is the first time they're hearing that the grandson of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was killed. They separated his head from his body.
When you reach the end of the procession, around 5 to 10 kilometers, they wait for everyone to gather around. First of all, they'll do a reenactment performance for a few minutes, half an hour at the most. When the reenactment performance takes place, they find out what happened in Muharram, on Ashura. Maybe the non Shia and the Christians come to the Ashura proceedings just for that reenactment. <laughs> 